Clancy Foe, probably arguably one of the hottest artists coming out of the UK right now. He's been buzzing for quite a while now, and I actually did a video on him two years ago, back in October of 2020. So yeah, so it's pretty much, it's been over two years since I've made a video about him. Since then, I feel like I've improved drastically and wanted to make an updated video because I believe Lancey can really be big and break the mold of how some people in the US think of UK artists in the rap sphere. I say that even though you can't really classify Lancey under a specific category because he's so versatile. But before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this because you guys could be doing a million other things right now, but instead, you're here with me and and I appreciate that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. Comment down below your favorite tracks and projects from Lancy Foe. Also, let me know where you're tuning in from. Represent where you're from, especially if you're from the UK. But without further ado, I give you the video. Lancey Foe was born in November of 1995 in Playstown, Newham, East London. Lancey is of Ugandan descent and is very proud of his heritage. His dad was actually a DJ and used to play Congolese music. Lancey has compared being from Newham, East London, being similar to places like Harlem and or Brooklyn. He says that it's a really small area where pretty much everybody knows each other. There's a lot of crime, but also a lot of talented people in this area. Lancey was very rebellious during his youth and Lancey would end up being tied to the street life which would have an effect on him as we will see. We fast forward a bit and Lancey was attending college in West London when he actually lived in East London. College obviously costs money like many of us know especially when you estimate the travel Lancey had to do to go back and forth so Lancey went the street route to get his money. This led to him getting kicked out of college for not going to his classes. An event around this time period would actually have a massive effect on Lancey's life. When asked about how he got into making music, this is what Lancey said in an interview. I had basically a plug. I owed him some money. He happened to be at a studio. He was starting a label at the time with an artist. The artist was there for 13 or 14 hours and he ain't made one song. I was like, I can make a song, let me do something. I went on YouTube, found some weird beats, some trip hop type beats and made three songs in three hours. When I went home, I just fell in love. I couldn't stop listening to the songs. I couldn't believe that it was me. From then on, I was addicted to making music. I wasn't thinking I wanna be an artist, I was thinking, I want to make music. One of those songs from this early session is the song Black Flowers. Here's a clip of what the song sounded like. It's different and interesting listening to early Lancey, and this was around 2015, I believe. Early on, Lancey made over 50 tracks by just freestyling over downloaded YouTube instrumentals, with many of his early material being deleted from the internet. I know that a good amount of stuff was deleted from SoundCloud. But speaking of Lancey's recording process, he doesn't really write in freestyles as I mentioned earlier. He makes songs pretty quickly, and in his early days, he used to book a studio for two hours and make four or five songs in a session. But four or five months into rapping, Lancey got arrested the day he was supposed to do his first show. I believe he was arrested very early on in the day around 1am or something like that. He was supposed to perform later at this place called Visions in London. Lancey sat in his cell thinking that he was going to miss the show and he had no money because the police raided his house and his car had been impounded. He simply had nothing. Lancey was finally released after a little while later and when he got home his mom was there she was tired of his antics already and was tired of what Lancey was doing at the time because he was always getting into trouble growing up he never really listened to his mom but this day his mom didn't yell at him instead she said that he had one chance and you either take it or you don't she said that he had to learn from his experience and he ended up listening he still managed to make his show that night and since this show he has never looked back he stayed in the studio learned his craft and got better with time music was now everything to him. In 2015, Lancey would drop his project Pink, which stands for Probably I'll Never Know. 
This is a series that Lancey has in his discography, with the second installment being talked about in a little bit. Upon being asked why he named the series after the color, he would say that it was a mood that he had a while back that he had to reignite. Him being in that mood started a lot for him that included a lot of things in a lifestyle sense. Being young, being a bit different, girls, cars, in his late teenage years. Lancey would further say, I just wanted people to say that even if they don't understand it, they like it. I didn't need them to be specific specific with what beats or what bars they like, but I just wanted to know that they felt something from it, whatever that might be. Now personally, I'm not really a huge fan of the first Pink project, not saying that it's bad, but out of all of Lancey's projects that I listen to, this isn't one that I like listen to frequently. I'm not really a huge fan of his early work for the most part because he was still developing, but I will say the song Last Time off of Pink is beautiful. Definitely recommend that song 100%. A couple weeks after Pink Lancey released a song that was really popping in the UK called About It. After a few standout performances, Lancey would release another project called Teen Scum in 2015. Lancey would keep up the work and would release music throughout the rest of 2015 and 2016. In 2017, Lancey would release a collaborative project with English producer Nige titled First Day at Nursery. By 2018, Lancey would gain more popularity and in that year, he would have released the project Too Far Alive. The thing about this project is that in 2021, it was taken off of all streaming services, including SoundCloud and YouTube for unknown reasons. I did manage to find someone did re-upload the project on SoundCloud. I feel like with this project, we started to see Lancey really start to form the Lancey that we know today. With songs like East, Soldier, A Lot of Ice, and Carlton Banks, we can see Lancey really start to hit the sound that we're familiar with today. This would also be the year that Lancey would release the second installment of the Pink series with Pink 2 and this project to me was Lancey really inching closer to shaping his sound. This project also got Lancey a lot of exposure and if you look at the track list for the project there should be one feature that stands out and it should be Skepta. Now for the people who don't know Skepta he is a big artist in the UK and Lancey getting a co-sign from Skepta was was huge. Being from the UK, Skepta has managed to garner fans in the States, whether it's from his music or through his appearances on popular American artist songs like ASAP Rocky and Playboy Cardi, but Skepta also has ties with Canadian rapper Drake, who we all know is a super, super, superstar. Now how Lancey met Skepta is that Lancey had seen Skepta at a few events, but never formally met him. Lancey was dropping a lot of music before Pink 2, and Skepta DM'd him and told him to pull up to the studio. Lancey would pull up to the studio and made the song Die Twice that appeared on Pink 2. That's definitely one of my favorite songs off of that project alongside Brainwashed, Sassy, Red Red Wine, and Sign Language. Something to note is that Lancey does produce music and produced some stuff on this project, but someone else who had production credits on this project and who people who are familiar with Lancey might know is Jay Trench. Sick producer, Benny X is another guy who Lancey gets production done by and he's really good as well. In an interview with Our Generation Music in 2021, Lancey was asked about the possibility of there being a pink three and he said that he doesn't know but i think that we all know what comes next and that would be his project friend or foe which was released in december of 2019 insane project and this project really garnered lancy a lot of attention and i personally feel like this project is hands down as of now, his best project from top to bottom. In 2019, Lancey would release the song Catch Me If You Can, which according to the singles cover art in the bottom right corner, it says that the track was supposed to be the third song on the album. With the official release of the album, the track was nowhere to be found. But in September of that year, Lancey would release probably his most popular song to date, which is India. This is a great song and I really love it, but it also doesn't come as a surprise to me that Lancey doesn't really like the song all that much. Here's what he had to say about the song. For a lot of people, that's the first song they heard by me, but that song is not me. 
India is a pop song. You don't have to think about it too much. I'm not always trying to make a freaking catchy song. I'm trying to say something in my music. I'm trying to explain to people, stop being stupid out here, understand what life is, understand who you are as a person. I've been talking about life and dying and self-reflection in 80% of my music. I'm from a place where it's dark. Stuff happens, people die. That was my environment for a long time before I made music. The song India is how I actually discovered Lansing. I got recommended the song on YouTube and his name really stood out to me and upon listening to the song, I wanted to check out his discography and that's when I ran across Friend or Foe, which had been out for a few months at that point. I remember I was back home from college on quote unquote spring break around this time and this was during prime Rona season. So long story short, I didn't end up going back to school, but I just spent my days going to online classes while grinding out The Witcher 2. Like, yo, I was super late on The Witcher 2, but that doesn't matter. But every time that I play that game, I think of friend or foe because I played that game nonstop while listening to that project. Nothing has changed besides switching The Witcher with Elden Ring as of late, but you know, we're not gonna get into all that. But let me know how you first discovered Lancey in the comment section below. But I can't stress enough how good Friend or Foe is. It's a must listen if you haven't listened to it yet. My favorite songs from that tape are pretty much all of them, but my favorites are Slow Burn, Elon Musk, Take Some More, Say None Ain't Nothing, So Free, and Life and Death. The intro and outro to this project are amazing. This project also allowed Lancey to sell out his first show a few days later in London. The last little tidbit I will say about Friend or Foe is that allegedly Friend or Foe was not supposed to be the name of the project. According to Genius, Lancey said on an Instagram story that he wanted to name the project Thriller 2, which is in reference to Michael Jackson's classic album Thriller. I'm really glad if true that this never came into fruition because I think that Friend or Foe is just a far better name. This also doesn't come as a surprise to me because Lancey has stated numerous times that he's inspired by the likes of Michael Jackson and Prince. Before we continue, I have to mention Lancey's modeling career. And it's ironic because Lancey actually doesn't like pictures of himself. I can actually understand that because I'm kind of like the same way. It's kind of hard to describe exactly why, but like it's just I'm kind of like the same way. But Lancey has done modeling and is very into fashion. One of the biggest things that he's appeared on was the cover of Wonderland magazine. Now to refocus on the music and in 2019, we will see Lancey start doing things with his ColtKane.com website. Now Colt Kane is a nickname for Lancey and is an era from Lancey that represents chaos and recklessness. According to Genius, once again, the website, which has now become an abandoned project, was mainly used during the weeks leading up to the release of Friend or Foe. When his ColtKane.com project started, Lancey was still deciding when he was exactly going to drop Friend or Foe. Each day, there was an announcement where Lancey would update the website with teasers and occasionally put out full versions of songs, alongside pictures in the layout of two different functional paths, which were Friend and or Foe. The ColtKane.com track list you see on Genius is in chronological order of the release of each song. Updates on the website were continuous until two days prior to the release of the song India. The website would resume a week and some change later where the website was updated with four new songs and with the message regarding the situation with the album rollout. In the message, Lancey would apologize for friend or foe taking so long he was working on perfecting it. He said that he was tired of a lot of stuff including Instagram, the pressure to do numbers, and liars. He said his happiness comes from making his art and giving it away so he'll be okay real soon. He had been in LA trying to, in his words, trying to find a whole new swag and had been making five to six songs a day. He finished off by promising that the friend or foe album was coming soon before his birthday and that he would be disappearing soon. With what we know now, Friend or Foe didn't come out before his birthday because I think that his birthday is in November and Friend or Foe came out in December, so he was very close. 2020 would be an interesting year for all of us with what was going on in the world and Lancey didn't release a project this year. He released some Lucy's, but one of my favorite tracks that did surface in 2020 was Lancey's F Everybody Freestyle. This is another must listen from Lancey and this really shows off his rapping ability. The dude is just flowing and spitting on this chaotic beat. Everything from sending shots at Mario Judah, people biting him, and more stuff, he touched on it. I do remember this time period 
period when I personally saw a lot of people compare Lancey to Cardi and also Young Thug. I mean, shoot, in the original video that I made about Lancey a long time ago, I compared him to Thug, but I was mainly quoting an article that I read, but I didn't like really think that he was very similar to Thug because they're very different. I personally don't think that Lancey sounds like Cardi really at all, and the only thing that they have that's somewhat similar to me is, I guess, I guess like appearance I guess in some aspects but also beat selection but there are Lancey beats where I can see Cardi rap on and vice versa for Lancey but no I really do think that Lancey is very different from Cardi because Lancey makes some stuff that Cardi like he just hasn't made yet but I really do think that Lancey is very unique with his style and he is in his own lane. Around this time there were also rumors of Lancey being a part of Opium which is played by Cardi's record label. Lancey is an Opium but however he is cool with them because as we know he has a relationship with Playboy Cardi and has multiple unreleased songs with him that we've never heard and some snippets that we have like headshots for instance. Side note I'm pretty sure that Lancey's song India samples Playboy Cardi's song Foreign but also Lancey is cool with Playboy Cardi's artist Ken Carson and has made songs with him with one being King Panther and was one of my first songs that I've ever heard from Ken Carson who if you don't know I rock with Ken Carson heavy definitely go check out my video that I did on Ken Carson. In 2022, it was heavily rumored that Lancey was going to appear on the remix of Travis Scott's single, Franchise, with Skepta, but that ended up never happening. This is something that I commented on in my original video about Lancey, and if you look up that version of Franchise with Lancey on it, you can find it on YouTube, and he has a pretty solid verse. It definitely would have done great for his career if the version of him and Skepta was released, but sadly, it never did. Lancey was working throughout 2020 and we would see what he was working on when he released First Degree in March of 2021. First Degree obviously being a reference to murder and this project was very different. It featured Lancey being a lot more aggressive and he was just on 10 the whole project. During the making of First Degree, there was a lot of change in Lancey's life and when questioned about this album in an interview, Lancey said, on first degree, it's my street side, my aggressive side, but I also have a side that's super vulnerable. When I get around nieces and nephews who are young, I just want to be a kid. I don't care nothing about the streets or nothing about adult life. And then sometimes I want to be a prophet and I want to teach. And sometimes I want to be a lover and tell my girl how much I love her and how much I appreciate her. And sometimes I want to be a talented rapper. I want to showcase my lyrics and showcase my bars. On songs like Murder Talk, he talks about how with everything he does, he's compared to Cardi and or Young Thug. Coming from friend or foe to this really caught me by surprise, I must say. In 2021, we would also see Lancey work with Ye. How Lancey first linked with Ye was that Lancey was in LA and Ye called him one morning and had about an hour long conversation with him. By the end of the conversation, Ye invited Lancey and his team to Las Vegas. When Lancey got to Vegas, Ye told him that he was working on an album, had a few more songs to work on. Lancey thought that he was going to stay in Vegas to work but Ye then told him that he was going to have a listening party for what would become Donda. This surprised Lancey because the album wasn't finished yet and about half of the songs were actually done. The weird thing that Lancey mentioned about the story is that he said that after they got off the plane to go to the stadium for the listening party, them staying in the stadium wasn't the original plan. Something happened when they got off of the plane and Ye said that when he got off of the plane, he thought to himself that they couldn't be out here slipping and told people to call all of the studios and bring all the equipment to the stadium because they were staying there for his listing party for what would become Donda. We know that Lancey didn't have a feature on Donda, but he did learn quite a bit from Ye during the process. In 2021, we would also see the release of three total projects from Lancey, with the first one being First Degree and another one being Life and Boredom, which is essentially a three song EP that is on SoundCloud and not really on streaming services, probably because of sample clearances. The last project we would see is Live Evil, which of course, Live Backwards spells evil. This project came as a surprise to me because I was really expecting Life in Hell, which I'll discuss in a minute, but it threw me for a loop when I saw this was getting released beforehand. I will say that my favorite off of this project are Respect, Out of My Mind, Sweet, Berserk, Too Swagged Out, Way to Miami, and Over Me. I felt like this was a really solid project to hold people over until Life in 
in Hell. Now it's time to explain what Life in Hell is. Well, it's Lancey's highly anticipated upcoming album at the time that I'm recording this. The concept of Life in Hell represents life for being good, great, pure, and living, while Hell represents bad, hot, and evil. How can we not see that we're living our life in Hell? He's not saying that everything is good or bad. Lancey has teased this project for quite a while now and has garnered a lot of attention for it. Lancey had the name of the project before the pandemic and as the project developed, he soon realized that it wasn't about him anymore and the album was about everyone else. I've seen a ledge track list floating around, but at the time that I originally wrote this, there was not a track list, like a solid track list. But now, I mean, I'm writing this like the week that the album is supposed to drop and there is one. So we're just gonna go with what I originally said. But basically, Lancey announced a Life in Hell tour, at least like the US dates. I'm really excited about this album. And while making my videos on people, I really try to dig into the people's music that I'm making the video about. I wasn't super big into unreleased Lancey, but yo, Lancey has some crazy unreleased stuff. My favorite by far is Enter the Dragon. That snippet is insane, and I hope that that appears on Life in Hell. If it doesn't, I will probably cry, I'm not even gonna lie. But some other stuff is Star Sign. That song is crazy. At the beginning of the video, I had Cyber Truck. Leading up to the album, we also got official songs being released, like Get It, Come On, Cool Than Me, Al Capone, and Take It to London. Come On and Get It are probably my favorites, with Get It addressing people wanting to turn Lanty into a poster, people telling him to turn up the numbers, and people trying to make him for a tool. This song really made me realize that Lanty has some fire ad-libs, with the chair ad-lib probably being my favorite. We also can't forget songs like Rio Freestyle, Poison and Stilo Flow that Lanty dropped, but the only song from those that I really mess with is probably Poison. Another last thing I want to touch on is Lanty's punk influence. 1979 in London, you don't even know about punk, is probably one of my favorite quotables from Lanty. Here's Lanty talking about punk. I knew about punk from really young. Where I came from and knew him, if I said I liked punk, at the time people would think raw. It wasn't that I was scared, it was just that I didn't start implementing it into my lifestyle until I made music. I used to always see the Sex Pistols logos, though when I was growing up, so I went on Google. Then I fully learned about them, The Clash, Gang of Four, learning about all of these British bands, not just the music though, the message. When I realized the message behind it, I hated school and the police would always be around. I think F off. I guess I always had a feeling that I had a punk mentality. Punk was that stand for me that said, I really do this. I actually made a rock song and a punk song in 2016, 2017, the rock one, no one has heard. I really wanted to go on that route, but it was so two-sided because I was more of a street guy than a punk guy. In terms of style, I'm punk, but musically, I just didn't think people would get me at the time. Now I really want to experiment more with it though. Finally, we get to October of 2022 and Life in Hell would officially release. There were three singles that were released before the album came out and they were Lancey or Lancey, Spirit of Ecstasy, and All Night Long. All these songs are really, really good and got me very excited for the album. So with this next part, I literally just got done listening to the album and I think that it's pretty good off of first listen. I still gotta obviously give it some more time to really sit and sink in with me, but I feel like the transitions were very well done and the production on this was amazing. However, for now, I still think that Friend or Foe is his best project. With Life or Death, I like a lot of the songs, but there's only a few that really pop out at me. Besides Lancey or Lancey and Spirit of Ecstasy, the songs as of now that I've added to my playlist are World on Fire, Sun, Moon, and Colors. Like I've said, this is my first listen, and in the coming days, you best believe that I'm going to continue to listen to the album. I'm really sad that we didn't get songs like Start Up, Enter the Dragon, Fed Up, Cybertruck, along with a bunch of other stuff that Lancey has previewed throughout the years. We did get Did It Again, but that wasn't one that I was really hyped about. The last thing that I want to mention before the end of the video is revisiting Lancey's modeling career. He's actually done some big stuff. He's done some stuff for Jordan and Givenchy. I don't even, Givenchy? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. But also his girlfriend is also a model too as well. But all in all, let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section below. I love you guys with all my heart. Man, I got a banger video coming Monday, so stay tuned. Peace.